Hi, this is Scott with No Room for Projects, and today I'm going to show you how to change the rotor and the brake pads on a Toyota Avalon. I believe the years are between like 2013 and 2018. You'd have to check for sure, but I think most of them will be very similar. And one of the things I need to make sure you know before you start is after you're all done and the tires are back on, you need to make sure you pump the brakes several times to reseat the brake pads. What I didn't um, do when I did it is I didn't pump the brakes and I put it in drive to just move forward a little bit and there were no brakes. And so I hit my gate and uh, you can avoid that if you just turn on your car and pump the brakes a few times to make sure that they're seated and then you won't have any problems. So just remember, pump the brakes and you're done with the car started. Thanks, and here we go. The tire off, and now we need to get the uh, uh, caliper off, and then we'll take the brake shoes off and see how they are. You'll need a 14 millimeter uh, wrench, open-ended or whatever you've got. Um, you don't want to strip these things out. Um, bottom one you're going to want to turn it down and there is there is another um, you can see it up here probably be better there's another bolt or a nut there that sometimes you'll have to hold with a, with some vice grips or some channel locks right here while you undo those And ones. But this one came out quite easily, so I didn't have to do that. And it's a very short screw. Oops, got turned around the wrong way. These things are really handy. Yeah, you can see this one turning. So I'm going to have to hold on to that. Vice grips might actually be the easiest way to do it, but we'll see if I can. Yep, that broke loose. Oops. Got to turn that over the right way. Okay, so that should be. Yeah, finger loose. Finger loose, finger tight. Pull that out. And. Put that where you can find it again, and you're gonna pull the caliper out. And right here, if I don't say before, you can use a seat clamp to push this back in. If you don't push this back in, you're you're not gonna get the new brake shoes in. If you have new brake shoes, I don't actually have new brake shoes. I've had them checked, and these are okay. Uh, but you'll have to squeeze that in, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, so when you get to the brake pads, you've got these two little pins. You just have to pull them out. This one faces down, that one faces up. Get those out. They're really easy. And then these should just wiggle right out. still have a lot of good space on them so I'll have to replace those but I am going to get the rotor turned and rotors can run you anywhere from like $40 to $150 this one's got little tiny grooves in it we went on a trip with a lot of heavy steep downhill and it got some heat damage but you can take them into some of the auto parts places and they can turn these on a lathe and just take off a tiny little bit and they're just like new I don't think I mentioned uh, got a 14 millimeter wrench to take off these two and a 17 millimeter to take off there's actually two back in the back here
And it helps to have a persuader. Persuade them to take to come off. Okay. Two of these, 17 millimeter, hold on the brake shoe bracket. Persuader again. Oops. Couple of good taps. lift up on the bracket to make it so that it will come out easily. Now with your rubber mallet, you want to be careful of this surface. Sometimes you can just tap it back and forth to loosen it up. If it's Tight. What you mostly want to do hit right here, but be careful you don't hit the threads. You have a rubber mallet. This one's a Harper Freight one. Uh, it's only a few dollars. One of the things to note too is that right here on the, the face it are two holes on mini um, calipers that you can actually, if you've got the right size bolt, you can screw that in. These are both the wrong size, but as you screw them in it will pop it off. So I'm going to try a little bit heavier persuading and just tap. Okay, I've got some bolts that I think look like they work, and I didn't have any that had the screw on. I'm going to try screwing these in and see if we. Oh, there we go. Popped it right off. So that's probably your best bet is to find find some uh, screws or bolts that'll go in there. And it pushes against them and pops them right off. So, I don't know if you can see this, but it's got a lot of little grooves in there. And when they grind them, they'll just put them on a lathe and grind those out. They're not very deep, so I think they should be able to grind them out. It should be fine. You got to go up on these on the driver's side. Forgot about that. So all I did was tighten them before, and we'll see if we can get it loosened up now. Well, and it is stuck. It needs to be held. Okay, this one's a 17 millimeter, and this one back here is a 14 millimeter. So as I as I move this up, it's eventually going to, well, I had to put it down here. So you can see that when it gets down to here, it's going to be against something solid, and I'll have two hands free to move this up. There. See, this one rested against something solid down there, this bracket right here, and then I can just pull that right out. Okay. 
now on the bottom same thing turn it around the right way and I'll see if I can just break it loose without having to hold it yep so sometimes they need to be held up here and sometimes they don't Okay, just pull the caliper out and pull it up. And be careful of the hose right there. Some people zip tie this up, but I'm just going to rest it right there. Get a little lot of these little clips. Maybe be 40 in here. Top or at the bottom. Can penetrate in there and pull out their pads. Looks like both of them are. In really good shape. Well, that is really tight. One, two, and then we have to get a 17 millimeter to break the big bolts back and back. There we go. Now we've got a deflator. And that'll slip right down now. Let's see if we can. And if you hold that up, support it a little bit. Persuade it that right out. to do what it's supposed to do. This rotor has a lot more grooves in it. And that's come loose. And it did. Uh, just a finger loose and pull it out. needs to be turned on the lathe. And another one down here. So you have to have both of them out to get that bracket out before you can get the rotor out. Let's change hands so it's not so awkward. and they put that on with an air air tool sometimes they tighten it down too tight okay and the same trick on this side do it on the other with these bolts an impact driver there pops it right off that is so much easier than trying to bump it loose So, I don't know if you can see those grooves. Let's see if we can. There we go. See those grooves in there? And that's what they're going to grind off. Okay, rotors are back. Shiny clean. They've been turned on a lathe, and uh, they look fantastic. even blasted the rough rust off inside so it would turn correctly and not be off and we're going to clean off some of this rust right here don't want to have any anything that'll hold it out uh, it looks like it's just superficial rust but you might want to check and see if you've got rust that's going to hold it out from being completely parallel. Okay, now we're going to put this back together. Bolts first. There we go, got the first one started. 
See if I can get this other one in here. Okay, that was much easier to line up. Those hands tightened in there, and we can tap that tight. This next one, tap it tight. I don't overly do it, I just like to tap those in. Okay, now we want to clean off the rust a little bit. Now we got our brakes, brake shoes. It's funny, they don't seem to want to. It's always seen the wrong size, wrong shape when you're starting this, but at some point. They just slip right in. Pretty kind of weird. Oh, you have to get them up over this lip. That was my problem. I was trying to slide them in this way. But if you get them past that lip right there, then that slides in. And this one has a little pin up here. You have to get past. So it might be easier to do the little forked part first. So get this in. Get the top part in. The bottom will slide right in. Okay, that's the secret. Put the forked in part first and get it past the lip. Uh, if I can find it over there. Get that in, get it over the lip, kind of bend it inside. And that slides right in. Okay, get our little pins wires, what do they call them? Make sure they're in tight. Got the bottom. Got the top. Make sure you've got these in. I don't know exactly what they're for, but you don't want to go without something that they feel must be important. Okay, if you don't have a C-clamp, just get your little clamp like this, and squeeze that, yeah, that looks like it works just fine. You kind of have to tug at it a little bit, but it seems to work fine, it just goes a little slower. Okay, I think that's going to work. Okay, just slip the, oops, make sure you don't get it twisted. I had this twisted. And make sure you push those together. 
So let me just slide over them. There you go. That worked quite well. And one bolt at the top. Wiggle it back and forth to get your hand tightened in there. And one down at the bottom. Okay, I had to push the push this thing in, it had come out, so it wasn't letting this thing fall down at the right place. So push it in. Looks like it's going to work fine. Get our deadbolt in tight. Get our 14 millimeter. Oh, well, that was right. Oops, I am taking it out. Thinking backwards here. Okay, and the 17 millimeter to hold it. And see, with the long one, it'll it'll brace itself, so you don't have to hold it. Tap that a little bit. Get it good and tight, but not overly tight. You want to be able to take it off next time. You have to change the brake pads, and then. This 17 millimeter one loose. Looks like this didn't want to come down. Okay. Ouch. It's kind of a little bit of feel. There we go. That one looks like it's gonna work without any twisting or turning on the 17 millimeter side. Get that in. There we go. Now we just need to get the tire on. That's how you change rotors. And during this, you could have just gone down and bought new ones. Sometimes the old ones are too worn or, or have too big of uh, uh, grooves in them to be safe for them to turn them and grind them down. And so you have to put new ones on, but you can put the new ones on exactly like I put these ones that have been turned and reconditioned on. And the same way I put the, the brake shoes on here, you can do the same thing with brand new ones. And sometimes they'll give you some um, little packets with some anti-chatter. Um, some kind of a little, kind of like a glue, lubricant kind of thing. And make sure you read the directions on those before you use them. So one last thing before I go, to make sure you turn on the car, 
pump your brakes a few times to make sure that the brake pads are seated so you'll have brakes when you start and you won't have the same problem I did where I ran into my fence because there were no brakes because I had forgotten to pump the brakes. And make sure you, before you do anything that you make sure you're, you have uh, chucks under the wheels to make sure you can't roll and make sure you uh, prop it up properly with car jacks um, to hold it up so you don't have any problems when you're removing the tires. Thanks, hope that helps. Give me a thumbs up and, uh, and share and comment if you have anything you'd like me to try next time. And we'll see you again uh, on the next trip.